Well, hello everyone and welcome to the plus add-ons for Elementor. And in this video, we are going to have a look at the login and sign up widgets, which is our most popular one and for many, many good reasons actually. First, it is highly customizable and you can make your login forms look absolutely fantastic. Another great feature is that you can combine login and sign up all at once on the same form, which would greatly improve the user experience. You can also easily integrate it with Google and Facebook login in order to streamline the login process. And this widget also offers a special panel for logged in users as well. And for those who forgot their password, we also have a few special options. Now, with this widget, the variations are literally unlimited so you can freely express your creativity. So all together, it's not hard to see why this widget is so popular. Okay, so let's dive right into it. Okay, so our very first step is to make sure that our widget is activated. And for this, we go to the plus settings, plus widgets. In the search box, look for login. And you should find normally WP login and register. Next to it, you have a toggle switch. Make sure this one is turned on and then click save. Now we have to clear the cache. We go to performance, purge all cache, click OK, and then click save. Very good. And now that our widget is activated, we can insert it on any Elementor page. So let's go back to our login and sign up landing page. And if we scroll down the page, you can see here with many, many different examples and demo that we can use. So let's see this one here. For instance, this one has login and register, and you can do so using Facebook and Google as well. By the side here, we have a copy feature. So if you were to click on this, we can now import this whole demo onto our Elementor page. So let's do this together. So if you go back to our Elementor page and create a new section, now if you right click on top of it, you can use the plus paste feature. So if you click on this, in just one click, the whole demo will be re-imported on your Elementor page. So this is one way to do it and it will save you a lot of time. So if I was to click on this one here, you can see this is our WP login and register widget. Or you can import it manually yourself onto your page. So if you look at all the different elements here and look for login, you will find it here as well and you can just drag and drop it as well. So these are two different ways you can do it. Now let's discover our widget. So as you can see at the moment, we have this message here that says registration option not enabled in your general settings. So if you see this message, you have to go back to your WordPress dashboard. You go into settings, general, and as you can see here next to the membership, there's a tick box. You need to enable this so that anyone can register. So click on this and then don't forget to save your changes. And now we can go back to our Elementor page and refresh our page then and reload. And as you can see now, our message, our error message is not displaying anymore. So this is absolutely fine. Okay, so let's discover all the customization options of this widget. And our first option is to select the type of layout. So at the moment we have login and register, but you can select among four different options. We have login, register, login and register, and forgot password. So if I selected login on its own, is just for the login feature. If I select register, it's only for the register feature and forgot password is the same as well. So let's keep login and register for now. And then we can select our layout. So we have the standard layout, which is like we have at the moment on our screen. You can select button hover. So if you hover on top, it will reveal the login and create profile form. If we select click, you have to click on the button to actually reveal its content so you can reveal or hide it and the same way with the button pop up and this one if you click on it it will open a separate window right on top like this like a pop-up window and you can also select the alignment so at the moment it's aligned to the left but you can align everything to the right or maybe you want everything centered so this is really up to you now let's keep standard form now let's configure our login options First, we need to give it a tab title. So this is the text that we can see here. At the moment, it says login. Maybe, maybe you want it to call, to call it log in. And then we have the label and placeholders. So let's start with the labels first. So let me enable this. 
and let's enable custom labels but let me add some text here so just like that basically and as you can see now if you enter some text here it will display right there on top of the field and then we have the custom placeholder so that basically the text here underneath so we have enter email enter password maybe you want to customize this in which case all you have to do is to change the content of those fields that you want to change and then you can do the same with the login button itself so as you can see at the moment it says login but maybe you want to, to say log in and then we have the remember me feature as well and if this feature is enabled as you can see we have a remember me feature just underneath and if your visitors tick this box it will save a small cookie on their computer and they won't have to enter the details each and every time and then you can decide whether or not you want to display the lost your password feature right here so it can happen that your customers might not remember the password they used at registration and if this is enabled all they have to do is click on it and straight up here they will be able to reset their password and they will receive a reset link via email and then you can also enable the register feature so let's go back to our form layout as you can see at the moment we are using login and register so both of them are readily available so in, if this is the case we might want to disable that option but if you're only using the login feature then you might want to enable this as well so what does it do for, basically so if you click on this enable this you can also create your profile right from here but again it's a bit redundant in our instance here because we already have a login and register feature so we can keep this disabled for now and now you can also redirect your visitors to a specific page after login if you want to use that feature all you have to do is to simply add the link right here and once they logged in it will go straight to that page next we have our two register tabs so we have register options and register extra options so first let's take care of our options so the first one is our tab title as you can see we've create profile but you might want to change this to something else maybe register and then we can tweak all these different options now every time we're going to do something to the settings here it will change and revert back to the login page so what we're going to do now is just disable the login page while we work on the register option just for the time being okay so we go to layout and then we're just going to have register it's just going to be easier for us to follow all these changes so as you can see we have the labels here we can enable this so as you can see now it will say first name last name and email so that's really up to you if you want to display this and you can even customize them all together so if you wanted to change those he heading those labels you can change the text right here and then you can customize the placeholders as well at the moment of john doe example at email.com which is pretty self-explanatory but maybe you want to customize this if this is the case enable this and then you can change the content right there now you can also redirect after registration so when your visitor has registered you can redirect them directly to a specific page maybe thank you for registering on our website or something similar and if you enter the url here once they're registered it will go straight to that page now if you are displaying the register form on its own like we are at the moment you might want to enable the login feature as well so if they are already registered they might want to log in immediately straight from here in which case all they have to do is click on this link and again you can change the message here and if you wanted something else and already have an account and login you can change this by inputting new text in those fields and then we have my account menu so if this one is enabled let me show you what it looks like in the front end so basically if you hover on top of this you can see we have mr web reviews and i can edit my profile and log out immediately from here and if it's disabled this option here will not display and then would you like to add a bottom message like a note for instance as you can see here this is your message it will display here and you can also tweak this around using the styling option so maybe you want the font to be slightly smaller you go right here you go into register additional message typography and then you can select the font size make it maybe a little bit smaller just like this and you can change the font weight or you can transform everything you can stylize it as well change the decoration and of course you can increase the line height and the letter spacing as well and now back to our options you can also change the content of the button now it says register and you can tweak this around as well and change it for something else and then we have the register extra options so first is our name field so as you can see we have john doe and the email address so uh, you can display this or not so if we disable this as you can see it's just the email address now if you want to display the name field 
you can have it like this and you can even add a username as well as you can see right here now it says john doe and then doe is the username so feel free to enable or disable any of those options and then we have the password field so you can enable this then it will show those two fields here in which case they can actually register using their own password and set it up right from here and then you can show or hide the password as well so if you enable this as you can see we have a little eye here and if you click on this it will display the password itself so you can change the icon as well select any icon so you just click on this and you can select among all these different icons here but let's keep this one because it's pretty nice and then you can define whether or not you want them to select and choose a strong password so if this is enabled they will not be able to register using a weak password for instance qwerty or dave1234 this will not be allowed so you can select different patterns you have pattern one two three four and five very simply here if you select pattern one it means that your visitors will have to enter a minimum of eight characters at least one letter one number and one special character so very very uh, strong password indeed pattern two is minimum four and maximum eight characters and at least one numeric digit and so on and so on okay so feel free to select any of those options now you can also add a password hint so if this is there for instance it will say one number and four to eight characters so that's basically just to remind your visitors what can be in their password and then you can select the visibility so by default it will display here underneath but you can also have on click or focus so let's select focus now i'm going to save this and i'm going to open this in an incognito page just to show you how it works very good so if i was to click on this and start typing my uh, password it will display so i'm going to start typing anything here so as you can see it will go green after four to eight characters but i need also to enter at least one digit so i'm going to type number one now and as you can see now it is validated so I'm back to our elementor page here so let's put it by default so we can see it and you can also change the layout so by default it will display here in two lines but you can have it in line as well and as you can see this is how it looks like and then we have the password strength meter so basically if this is enabled it will let your customers know how strong the password is and if it pass those credentials and then we have the recaptcha so basically the recaptcha option is to prevent bots from crawling your website and submitting fake accounts and before we can enable the recaptcha we have to create an api key and for this we go back to our plus settings and we're going to go into extra options and if you scroll down you can see we have the uh, site recaptcha v3 and the secret uh, recaptcha v3 so let me show you how we can set this up and for this we go to the google recaptcha website which is this one so our first option here is to enter our label which is usually our domain name make sure you take this box here recaptcha v3 we need to add a domain so again we paste our domain name right here make sure your email address is recorded here just make sure you take this, this box that uh, says accept the recaptcha terms and services and then submit and just like that we have our uh, site key and secret key now we can just copy and paste these two in our back end and again don't forget to click save once you're done and now that our credentials have been saved we can enable the recaptcha v3 on elementor itself and as you can see here it's displaying protected by recaptcha so this will not be visible to your visitors it might be visible slightly here in the corner but all together is just to let you know that it is active on the elementor page and then we have the honeypot as well so that's an old version from a recaptcha before recaptcha was in place so if you want to be fully secure uh, you can enable both of them and then you can integrate mailchimp subscribed as well so if you enable this you have all these different options now if you want to enable this and for this to work with uh, elementor and your page here uh, what you need to do is to go back to the plus settings extra options and if you scroll down the page you will see that we have the mailchimp api key so you will have to create an api key so for this you go to mailchimp you go into account extra and from there you can create the api key and then you come back here and paste it right there 
And as always, you can enable double opt-in groups and tags. And for the groups here, you need to insert the ID. And for this, all you have to do is click on this link here. It will bring you to the api.mailchimp.com forward slash playground, which is where you can locate all the IDs, uh, group IDs. Okay, very good. So next we have the terms and conditions. So you can enable this. And when this is enabled, it will add this line here. I agree with terms and condition before signing. So they'll have to tick this box before they can continue and register. And then you have custom email. So if we enable this, you can create a custom email. So you have the email subject and then the content. And as you can see, this one here, this is a short code. So you might, you might want to keep this one here. So this is to display the password basically. But everything, the rest of the content, feel free to tweak this around and type your own content. So next we have the form heading. Uh, if you enable this, it will add a heading here on top of your form. And you can change the size as well by selecting maybe H3 instead of H1 and so on. So this is basically it. Or you can simply add a heading straight from here from Elementor. This is really up to you, but this is a built-in feature that makes just life a little bit easier. Next, we have the social login and register. So this is the most exciting part of this widget because it will allow any of your visitors to log in using Facebook or Google. So this is a nice added value because the less stumbling blocks, the easier it is the more customers you're going to get, obviously, you know. So this is basically a very nice feature. So as you can see, we have a note. So we need to add the app ID for both of them. So for Facebook or Google. So if you want to use both of them, you'll need two app IDs. So we need uh, two APIs. Now, as you can see here, we have a small message here, a note. So in order for us to use either of those features, we need to add an app ID for Facebook and a client ID for Google. So for this, we go back to our WordPress dashboard. We go to the plus settings, extra options. And if you scroll down, you can see we have those two sections here. So we have Facebook app ID. So we have to fill this one out with a, an ID and this one with the client ID as well. So let me show you how we can do that. So let's start with Facebook, for instance. So we have a link here. So click on this link. And from here, all we have to do is just to create a new app. Very good. So from this section here, you're going to select none here at the bottom. Take this one next. And then here we need to display a name. So let's call it, for instance, the plus add ons. Make sure your email contact address is correct. And right here, don't select anything. Just leave it as is. OK, and then create app. We, now we need to enter your password. And right from here on top, you can see we have the app ID displaying immediately. But we also need the app secret. So where can we find those information? Very simple. We go into settings, click on basic. And right here we have those two sets of information. So this is our app ID. So you copy this and paste it here. And we do the same with the app secret. So we have to show it. And for this, you have to enter your password again and then copy and paste it right there. And don't forget to save. And now there's one last step to take care of. So we go back to the Facebook developers page. And as you can see, our app at the moment is in development mode. So we need to enable it. So use the toggle switch here. Choose a category, any of them. And then switch mode. Very good. And now we are live. OK, now we can close this window. Now let's do the same for the Google client ID. So as you can see, we have a link here. So just click on this. OK, so if you are like me, you might already have an existing app that will display here on screen, in which instance you have to click on this button here and create a new project. Otherwise, you can create a new project immediately from the previous screen. So we need to give it a name and then we create. Now, as you can see here, we have a notification that says our project is created. Now we can select our project. Very good. And from here, we're going to select OAuth consent screen. And now from here, we're going to select the external feature and then create. And then from here, as you can see, we have a preview of what our app will look like. And these are the details that will display. So we need to insert the app name. So let's call this the plus add-ons. And then we're going to select the email address. So normally you should be logged in with your Gmail account already. So it should display here. If this is not the case, just type in your email address. And you can add a logo as well if you wanted to. Just be aware that the size should be 120 by 120, so a square logo. 
and then we need to add a few additional information so here we have the home page so this is our website's home page and then you do the same for the link to your privacy policy page and your terms and conditions and then now we need to add our domain so let's click on add domain and then we need to enter the developer's contact email address so let's type this here and then you can save and continue now from here we don't need to add or remove any scopes we just scroll down the page save and continue and we do the same on this page we don't need to add any test users so save and continue and then again here at the bottom back to dashboard so this is set up now and now we need to publish the app so click on this publish app confirm very good and now we need to create our credentials so let's go to credentials add credentials oauth client id and now you're going to select here web application you can give it a name i'm going to leave it by default as is for now and right here we're going to enter the url of our website and be careful not to add any trailing slash so just like this okay and you do the same with this one again once more just like that and then create and just like that we have our client id available and all we have to do is just to copy and paste it in our backend here in our settings and as always don't forget to save and that's us done. Now let's go back to our Elementor page and let's make sure that both of these are enabled. So Facebook is on and Google is on and we have saved our page. Now we can have a quick test. So clearly I'm currently logged in as the admin so I won't be able to test it from here. So what I will do, I'm going to open this in a new tab in an incognito page, okay? So there you go. So this is what you look like. So as you can see, we have continue with Facebook and sign in with Google. So if I click on this one, as you can see, it will bring the Google signing page and then you can enter your email ad address and then uh, enter your password and you'll be able to sign in. Now let's try Facebook. So if I click on this, okay, so we're getting an error message here. So if you're getting the same error message, you can fix that very easily. So let me show you now. And for this, we go back to our developer's website. And by the side here, we can see we have Facebook login and then open this, click settings. And as you can see here, we have login with the JavaScript SDK. So you need to enable this. Now we need to enter our domain name again, just like this. And do the same here at the bottom, right there. Okay, and now click save. And that's it, that's us all done. Now if we go back to our test platform, now if we refresh our page, normally if we click on continue with Facebook, it should work fine. Very good, as you can see, this is the case. We don't have any error message anymore. Now you can enter your email address and phone number and your password and it will let you in. Now back to our Elementor page, as you can see, we can choose among two different layouts. So the one we just tried now was layout two. So let me show you layout one. So if we update now, let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is layout two. And now if we refresh, as you can see, this is layout one. So slightly different. It's just a matter of preferences, obviously. Now back to Elementor, we have the redirect URL. And as you can see, if you type in your URL here, once they are registered or logged in, they'll be redirected immediately to that URL. Now you can choose as well to hide the form altogether. So if you do so, they will not be able to use that form. They will have to log in either using Facebook or Google. Next, we have our lost password options. So as you can see, it is not displaying here. This is because this is a register form. This only applies to login form. So make sure that you selected either login or login and register. So let's use this one for now. And let's go back to lost password options. And as you can see, now it is displaying here. And now we can tweak this around. So first, let's click on the link itself to display the pop-up window. As you can see, this is the content of our placeholder email address so this is the text if you wanted to change it just type anything here and this is the button text email reset link or you can change this again and type in your own content and then we have the label here so you can display a label or not so as you can see at the moment it's forgot password and then in the field and then if you click on this let me show you now it will add an additional line here on top username and email so this is really up to you if you want to show it or not next we have my account menu so let me open this in a second tab now just to show you what it looks like 
So basically, as you can see, we have the avatar picture, my name, Mr. Web Reviews, the username, basically, and then you have edit profile and logout. So this is the account menu. Now you can tweak this around as well. So do you want to show it yes or no? If you disable this, obviously it will not display. And if you have it on, you can select which options you want to show and also customize them based on your own personal requirements. So for instance, you can decide whether or not you want to show the avatar picture. So this is our small image here. And then if you want to show the username or not, so Mr. Web Reviews, that's what we have here. And then you can do the same with the profile and the logout button. So what do you want to call them? Edit profile, logout, and again, you can change this text and tweak it around as well. Now we have the inline layout here as well. So this is disabled at the moment. Let's enable it and let's have a quick preview. And I'm going to show you the difference. So basically here, the difference is it will always display and be opened like this. Whereas otherwise you have to hover on top to reveal the content of the menu section. So let's disable this for now. And then you can also add extra menu tabs. So at the moment we have edit profile and logout. Maybe you want to add a download page as well if you're selling online uh, products. So maybe you can have download and then you can put the URL maybe. And then that's basically it. So if you close this now, we have an extra tab. If I have a quick preview. Now, as you can see, we have an additional tab that's called download. Very good. Then next we have our notification messages. So this is exactly how it says. This is just to tweak uh, the content and the text of our different messages for all the different sections for the login message, register message and lost passwords message. So there's no need to spend too much time on this. This is pretty straightforward. And then after this, we have the login fields and register fields width. So basically this is just to set the width of our different fields. So as you can see now, it's 100% at the moment, but you can change the width based on your own preferences. So let's see, we have the username at the moment. So if we were to use this section here, as you can see, you can make it bigger or smaller. So again, this is really up to you. So if there's no value, it will by default take the full width. And again, this applies to both login fields and register fields. Next, we have the validation error messages. And here we only have two different options, either on or off. Okay, so let's keep it off for now. Let's click update and let me show you what it looks like in the front end. So if you don't fill out any of those fields and try to register, it will show you an error message like this. So please fill out this field. So this will be the same for all of them. Even if I fill out John and click register, it's the same text, the same message. Please fill out this field. But now if we enable this feature, we can tweak this message around. So here we can have enter first name, enter last name, enter email. So let's click update and let me show you in the front end. Now in this instance, every line will show a different message. So for instance, I already filled out John and Doe. If I was to remove Doe, as you can see, our message says enter last name. So if I fill in Doe again, the message disappears. And finally, our last feature is the reset password option. So basically here, if you enable this, it will require a strong password. And this last option here, login register form override, you might want to leave this one on by default. Basically what it does, if someone requests a password reset, they will receive an email, they click on the link inside that email, they re they'll be redirected back to this form, in which case it will convert the login form into a reset password form. Now again, this is a very handy feature, but now it's really up to you whether you want to enable it or not. Okay, now let's go ahead and see our styling options. So from here, you can literally style all the sections, everything from the login, register, and for password sections. So first we have the form label, so we can change the color and the font. So they are disabled at the moment, so let me enable this very quickly. There you go. So as you can see, it's a bluish color at the moment, so you might want to change the color as well. So let's say if you want it maybe to make it more noticeable, use a red color. And then this is maybe a little bit too big. So maybe you can reduce the size. So again, you have all the different options when it comes to typography. So typography, it's all related to fonts. You can, for all these different sections, is the same features. You can change the font family, the font size, weight. You can transform, stylize, decorate, and change line height and letter spacing as well. So here we're just going to change the size of the font and make it a little bit smaller. So maybe just like this. 
Now let's have a look at our form input fields. So again, we start with the typography, so the font, so you can change this. So maybe you can make this a little bit smaller. 15 is maybe a little too big, just like that would be just about perfect. And then we can change the placeholder color. So this is the font color basically here, okay? So you might want to do it maybe a bit brighter or maybe darker, really up to you. So let's go a little bit brighter like this, and we can even change the background color. So at the moment, it's a light gray, so we can change that color and we can change the color in normal mode and focus mode. So let me show you very quickly. So let's select a color here. So let's go maybe for a beige yellowish color like this. And then in focus mode, let's do the same thing and let's try a slightly darker color. So let's go maybe with this shade here. Just perfect. Okay, so what does it do now? So basically, if someone wants to click on this and enter the email address, as you can see, the background color has changed. Now, if you click anywhere outside that field, it will go back to its normal color. And then we have the exact same features and options for the borders. So the first option is whether or not you want to display borders altogether. So if we disable this, as you can see, there, is, there are no more borders here. If you enable them, then you have a few different features. So first, what type of border? Is it a solid border, dashed, dotted, or grooved maybe? And then you have the border width. So at the moment it's just one pixel, but you can increase that and make them thicker. Okay, just like this. So let's go back to one for now. And you can also define the border color. And again, in normal mode and focus mode. So if someone wants to click on this on normal mode, it will display a certain color. And once they click on it and put the emphasis on it, you can have a different color. So let's tweak this around slightly now. Okay, so what I've done, basically, I've added two different colors. So yellow in normal mode and focus mode, it'll be red. So you can clearly see what it does. So if I click on it now, as you can see clearly, we have a red outer border now. And then we can do the exact same thing with the box shadow option. So we can define a box shadow in normal mode and focus mode. So let's say maybe we wouldn't have any box shadow in normal mode, but just in focus mode. So what we can do is just add a box shadow. So let's add maybe one or maybe two here and two there. So now if we click on this, now as you can see, it will only show a box shadow in focus mode. Very good. Next, we have our form button and this will apply to either login or register is this blue button here at the bottom basically. Okay. So what we can do is to set up the button alignment. So at the moment is aligned to the left, but you can align it to the right or maybe just center it. And you can do the same with the text. So you could have the text aligned to the left, to the right, or centered. And then you can set a maximum width value. So at the moment is 200. Maybe you want it to make it a bit smaller or maybe bigger. That's really up to you. So let's keep it maybe around 200 again. And then you can change the font again with the typography. So these are all the exact same options as usual. And then you can add some padding and margin. So at the moment we have 20 pixels on top. So if you were to increase it for, uh, let's say 50, as you can see, there'll be more spaces here in between the form and the button itself. And then we have all the options related to the color of the button itself. So as you can see, it's a slight gradient from darker blue to brighter blue. So this is why we have two different colors here because we selected this option here, gradient. Now you can have a plain color. As you can see now it's plain blue. And if you select a gradient, you will have all these different options here that will allow you to tweak and customize the gradient color exactly the way you want it. And now we can configure a different set of colors in hover mode. So as you can see at the moment, they are non configured. If I hover on top, it remains the same color. But let's go and change this as well. So if we go in hover mode, so let me add a few colors here. So there you go. I added a gradient color from dark purple to brighter purple. And now if we hover on top, as you can see, it will change color altogether. And you can use this if you want it to show a border. So basically at the moment is disabled. As you can see, we have no borders altogether. So you can enable this if you want it to show a border. And then you, again, you can select which type of border and how thick you want it. And you can also add a certain amount of shadow in normal mode and hover mode. Now let's have a look at our heading option here. So as you can see at the moment, it's not enabled. So let me enable this now. So now as you can see, our heading is displaying here and we can change the font. So maybe we can make it a little bit thicker, just like this. And you can change the color as well. Very good. Next, register additional message. And again, from here, you can change the font and the color of the heading. 
and then with the remember me feature so this is the one here with the tick box so from here again we can change the font so from here you can change the size make it bigger and smaller and tweak it around and then we have the remember me color so as you can see at the moment it's a grayish color a bit faded maybe you want it to be more visible or maybe change the color altogether. So let's go maybe with the color red like this, and then the unchecked background color and checked color. So as you can see, if I click on this, we have different sets of colors. So you can define the colors all together. So let's say the checked background could be maybe blue to match our button here. So let's go with this color right here. If we check this box, it will turn blue. Very good. Next, we have our lost password and register text. So that's our forgot password text here. So we can change the font. So maybe we'll make it a bit thinner and we might want to change the size altogether, maybe a little bit smaller. And then you can change the font color as well. So maybe let's go for blue this time. And then we have the lost password back arrow. So basically, if you click on this, as you can see with this arrow here to go back to the menu, so we can change this as well. So you can select any icon here. If you click on this, you can select among all these different options here. So if I was to put here maybe arrow, we can select any of them basically, okay? So let's go, go and change this. So let's select this one instead, or maybe that one. Insert, very good. So if I click on this, now we have a different arrow and you can change the color as well. So let's change this to a blue maybe again, just like that. Next, we have our login and register tabbing. So it's those two sections here on top. So let's scroll down a little bit. So we have the normal mode and active mode. So if I was to change one of those colors, let's say if I was to change this to black, as you can see now, register is black, login is blue. But if I click on register, register will turn blue and login will be black. So you can have two different colors for the active and the normal mode. Now, if we go back in active mode, as you can see, we have a solid border at the bottom of two pixels, which is this one here, that thin line in blue. And you can also add a background color if you wanted to. So uh, let, let's try this now. So let's add a background color. Let's change the color maybe to something a little bit uh, brighter like this. So there you go. So we could do this this way as well. So feel free to play around with all these different settings. And, uh, and again, you can add borders and change the border radius as well. And now we could do the same in normal mode. We can add a background color as well. At the moment is white. So let's select maybe something around the beige color, maybe like this. And let's add a solid border of two at the bottom, just like this. And we could even change the color as well, maybe. So let's go for something orange, just like that. So now if you click on one on the other, as you can see, the colors will change. There you go. From active to normal. Next, we have the notification message option. So basically here you can change everything related to those fields. Uh, you would change the font, you can change the color, the background color and all that. So basically just as a way of reminder, it's all these different message here. So notification message. So basically during the login, register or loss process, uh, if you have to display any of those messages, you can tweak how they look like by using those options here. And next we have the custom validation field. So basically here, let me show you again where this is located. So basically if I remove what I filled in here, we will have this message here, enter last name. So we can tweak this. So basically there are no settings at the moment. So if it's left blank, it will fetch the default color and font size as well. So let's change this a little bit. So let's change the color for instance. Let's go for red. So if I was to fill in here, maybe door and then remove it. There you go. As you can see, our message now says enter last name in red and you can change the font and everything as well. Now we have my account menu. So from here, basically all the settings are related to this field here. So we can change the font color. At the moment it is blue. You could change the font color to something maybe like black and you can change the background color as well. So at the moment it is white. Maybe you can change a different color, maybe something like uh, light gray. So now let's have a quick preview. And as you can see, we have a gray background with black font. So basically all these different options here are the exact same as previously shown. So it's everything related to background, borders and shadow as well. Now we have the image style as well here. So this is the small image here next to our uh, name here, username. So you can define the image size. So at the moment, this is 
30 pixels. So maybe you want to make it a little bit bigger. So let's go maybe up to 65. Let's quick update. Let's have a quick preview. And as you can see, we have a much bigger avatar picture. So this is our image and you can change everything as well. You can obviously add border, increase the width and change the border radius. And then we have the button itself. So this is our section here all around it. So you can change the background color again and you can change this in normal mode and hover mode. And again, as always, you can add a border as well and a box shadow. Next, we have a box content option. Now, just to show you what the box content is, let me change the background color maybe to something red. So basically, this is all this section here. OK, so from here, basically, you can add some padding all around it. So if you were to add maybe 50 padding, as you can see, it will add some spacing all around it. And then it's the same for the margin. You can change the background color. You can add a border as well if you wanted to all around it. You can change the width maybe to one pixel and you can have rounded edges as well just like that okay and as always you can change the color from all these different options and then we have the extra options here and to demonstrate this feature i'm going to use a blank canvas we're going to start with two sections and right here we're going to put a menu so we're going to select the plus add on menu navigation here this one we keep menu horizontal select a menu section just like this. In the extra options, we're going to make this one sticky. And we are going to insert our login widget on the right hand side. So let's select login. Let's make this a button pop up. And now in order to demonstrate the sticky effect, I'm going to add two long sections on this page. So there you go, two long sections. Now so if we scroll up and down, as you can see, our menu is sticky and stays on top. And then we can change the layout of our button now. So if you're going to style, now we can use the extra option. So if we enable this, the sticky navigation connection, let's enable this. Now we can change the color of our button, background and etc. when you scroll up and down in normal and sticky position. So at the moment, our background is blue. Our icon and font is white. If we scroll down, it remains the same. Now you can change this. So let's say if we were to add a text color black, and change the background color. And now let's put this to the test. And as you can see, as we scroll down the page, our menu is sticky, but the color of the button is changing. And you can change the colors of your icon, text, background, and you can also add a border, change the border radius and add a shadow effect. And this works for before login and after login as well. Now let me show you another feature here related to this plugin. If you go into the navigation, style, we go into sticky main menu. You will find the section background option for normal mode and sticky mode. So if you wanted to add a background color in normal mode, so this is the background, so it will always remain pink. Now, if you want to change the color in sticky mode, you can do it as well. So we add a color. Now, if we scroll down the page, as you can see, it will change color as well. So these apply to both of these options. And this is why we add it in the styling of the login and sign up an extra option that will help you to work alongside this other menu section.